question. So if we think about a vernal pool like this, um, if we think about vernal pools, vernal pools can be everything from just what looks like a small puddle to something as huge as this. This um, kind of vernal pool was quite surprising to me when I moved to Rhode Island because I did a lot of work in the Adirondacks and all the pools there are very small. Maybe the largest ones are a fifth of this size, 20% of this size. This is a big pool to me, but now that I've lived in Rhode Island for a while, it seems kind of a reasonable size, don't you think, Dr. Payne? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so we've talked about wood frogs, we've talked about spotted salamanders, so Lithobates sylvaticus, Ambystema maculatum, the wood frog and the spotted salamander. Talked a little bit about marbled salamanders, we'll talk about them more later, Ambystema opacum. Some other species that we can find using habitats around vernal pools are, of course, Plethodon cenarius, the redback salamander that we just that we showed in another film, and um, a species known as the four-toed salamander, Hemidactylium scutatum. That's another plethodonid salamander, completely terrestrial. Um, if Dr. Payton could scan to some of these logs out close to the water here. Or not? I am. Oh, he is. So sometimes these logs that are overhanging the water, if they have a big patch of moss on top of them, we can find Hemidactylium scutatum, the four toed salamander. Those salamanders, for whatever reason, they're, um, they're associated with mossy patches near vernal pools or near wetlands. And what they do is they will go in, uh, the females will go under those patches of moss and they will engage in communal oviposition. 20 females could lay their eggs all together under one patch of moss on the log or in a patch of moss just immediately adjacent to the vernal pool that gets wet. And um, the interesting thing about Hemidactylium scutatum is that they have parental care, but not all 20 females would stay there and guard the eggs. Only one female stays and guards all the eggs in that communal oviposition site. And that's really interesting and we don't understand it because how do they decide who stays? Well, we have no idea. One of them stays, we don't know if it's the first one, we don't know if it's the last one, we don't know if it's one in between, we don't know if it's the smallest and she gets bullied and she has to stay, but one female stays. So another thing that, uh, another species that we can see in vernal pools fairly irregularly is Lithobates palustris, the pickerel frog. Um, they tend to breed in permanent wetlands that are fairly shallow with a bunch of emergent vegetation. Here we've got rushes and sedges um, they tend to be associated with wetlands that have emergent vegetation and rushes, sedges, um, also cattail, typha. Um, interesting thing about this vernal pool is twice I found egg masses of Lithobates palustris, which is a little bit surprising in a vernal pool. But I think because this pool is so big and the hydro period is so long, meaning the pond holds water for a long time, they can make it. Their egg masses are hard to find, they're about softball size between a baseball and a softball. They're really compact, perfectly round clusters of eggs. They're attached to some of this emergent vegetation, but the reason they're so hard to find is they may be attached a meter deep in the water. They're way, way deep. And nobody really understands why they attach them so deep in a situation like this, except again, it may be that their developmental period may be longer and the risk of the pool drying down um, may be the reason, but we don't know. And aren't the colors of the eggs different than a wood frog egg? I've only ever seen two. Could you tell me about that? I thought that they were, the eggs were kind of a dark brown, brownish coloration rather than black. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds right. A lot of the, um, a lot of the permit pond breeding species of lithobates, like Lithobates clamatans, the green frog, Lithobates catesbianus, the bullfrog, and it sounds like also Lithobates palustris. They tend more on the browner side, brown black, rather than um, on uh, being pure black. But don't the, those other species, green frog and bullfrog, rather than a 
than a round egg mass. It's more of a sheet. That's right. The yeah. Lithobates catesbianus, the bullfrog, lays a sheet right on the surface and Lithobates clamatans lays kind of a, a loose co conglomeration that mostly floats at the surface and kind of dangles down below. And later in the semester, maybe we'll get to see those egg masses. Maybe we will. Thank you, Dr. Pete. Thank you, Dr. Carriker.